Okay. Hola. Welcome everybody. This is a um, project collaboration of the Hashtag Network Collective with the Frick Museum. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you to the Frick Museum for bringing Frida Kahlo, an intimate po portrait and the photographs of um, Nicholas Murray of Frida Kahlo. Um, we at the Hashtag Network Collective are very, very, very excited to be a part of this um, project. And today we are going to be cooking some uh, Frida inspired um, uh, foods. Um, I, uh, I have an immense love for Mexico. I am from Puerto Rico originally. I was born and raised there for 21 years of my life. But I was exposed to a lot of Mexican songs and a lot of Mexican art and Mexican music and food as well. And today I'm going to uh, prepare with my lovely friend Zina, part of the um, Hashtag Not Collective, a dish of chiles poblanos rellenos uh, and then some uh, canoas. So the chiles poblanos rellenos are Mexican and the canoas are Puerto Rican. And yeah, and today we'll, we'll start cooking. So let's get the kitchen going. Um, tell me if I forgot anything. <laughs> uh, and we start by turning on a pan. Una sartén a fuego mediano, medium heat. Yeah, no, actually. I have already prepared a mix of cilantro, ajo, y aceite de oliva. The cilantro, garlic, and olive oil. It's called mojito, right? Mojito. Um, we usually use it in Puerto Rico to like uh, season um, root vegetables. Like you make yuca or like patata, ñame. Then you, um, you boil it and then you put that over. But I kind of like um, using it as a base. You know, because um, it has my favorite um, ingredients to begin a, a, a dish with, right? I love it. Yes, yes, and that's garlic. I want to say hello to everybody who's joining us. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Um, again, we are live through the Frick. Museum of Pittsburgh with Henyal. Woo woo! Hola. And your co host here is Zena Ruiz behind the camera. And we are yes, yes. members of the hashtag Not White Collective. That is true, very, very true. We love our sisters of the hashtag Not White Collective. We've been through many, many projects and many adventures together. And this is our most recent one, cooking with you guys, teaching you a little bit of about all our different cultures and traditions. So, yeah. So, <laughs> again, for those who are joining us, we have our olive oil base, our aceite here. What'd you call it again, Henya? The mo like mojito, mojito. Puerto Puerto Rican version of mojito. You know how like they have that cute, they call it like a Cuban drink or mojito. Um, but the, the, in Puerto Rico, it's actually a seasoning to add um, to um, yuca or batatas or any root vegetables after, you know, you um, boil them. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, all right. So we get this um, going with some more heat. And then... Let me prepare the meat. Look at that. these platanos. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. And we've got this beautiful cookbook here. What is this cookbook? That is the Frida's Fiestas book. And it's a book that her um, stepdaughter, Diego's daughter, and a friend, I don't know. It was Lupe Rivera and... I don't want to not give credit to where credit's due. Uh, right here. Marie Pierre Cole, Cole, or Cole, I don't know, Coye. Um, eh, 
collaborated in this um, book and it has stories and recipes of Frida, um, of her life. Um, I, que sabroso. We were discussing the, the thing, like I've heard that some people say that Frida like cooked and some people say that she did and I assume that she did but not all the time because, well, she, she had a lot of um, health issues because a couple of accidents she had in her life. Well, she had polio when she was young and then was in a terrible car crash. Well, tranvia, un accidente, tranvia. And, uh, and that really um, left her a life of, of, of pain and, and and difficulties, what is it? ¿Cómo se llama la palabra? Uh, Just like challenges or... Uh -huh. Ch yeah, physical challenges that did not make it as easy to be, you know... Um, what am I doing? Ah! It's okay. Back. Okay. Next step is... I'm going to add... Cebollas or... That is onions. To this dish, it's like all burnt. I cut onions and then I add them to this dish. There we are. I need to lower the, the heat here for a little bit. Okay, so now I added cut onions. I prepared everything beforehand. I should have said that before I continue talking about anything else. That I prepared. I cut onions in very tiny pieces, and then I also cut um, red um, red peppers and also green peppers, and we're gonna add them, you know, one at a time, little by little. Mmm, huele sabroso. Yeah, you can smell the ajo, the garlic. Um, in that all in that oil base you had uh como se dice so we had garlic i want to say it in english because you said it in spanish Ajo. Just, yeah the garlic we had cilantro olive oil uh-huh yeah that's it in the in the, fir the first step what was garlic cilantro and olive oil in mash in el cajete which is yeah the un, un pilón y maceta in, in puerto rico they call this al La maceta y el pilón, ¿verdad? Ya. Yeah. Y en, aquí dice Puerto Rico, es de la Sí, es de la that's a beautiful one. Uh -huh. Y en México, uh, usualmente, usually is uh, made of uh, cement. What do you call like, it? Lava rock. Lava rock. Yeah. Dentro del molcajete. Uh -huh. um, but, you know, this is Puerto Rican home, so allá del pilón y la maceta. Yes. <laughs> I also wish we had the smell with this video because you can, yeah. you're picking up the, the hints of the, the garlic is coming through strong. The onion, you can smell it caramelizing. Mm -hmm. And it's just feeling the room. You know, right. I'm going to try and do my best to articulate the senses um, that I'm hearing and smelling and <laughs> maybe even tasting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So now we, we're adding a red pepper. Everything, you know, happens according to how I like, I like the, the onions. To, I put them first because I don't really like like super crispy onions on my food. Like I want them to disappear in the dish. So especially because this is for the relleno. This is the stuffing for the uh, chiles poblanos and for the plantains. So I like to, you know, feel more like the peppers than the onions. The onions, I like them to be kind of like hidden in the plate, you know? Mm -hmm. So we get the, all the deliciousness except the, the crispiness. Yeah. <laughs> Not that I don't like it for some other things, but for this specific thing, I don't, I don't care much for that. And then, and I like to look to, to cook the peppers to the point where they get that texture of like the roasted red peppers where they're very soft and delicious. Yeah, and now we're adding the green peppers. And in the background, we're listening to Chabela Vargas, which 
Um, sorry, one second. Uh. Salud. There it is. These are our ingredients. This guy got some ground beef. Grass fed. Check that out. Look how beautiful this is. Yes. It reminds me of Frida's colors. Mm. This is Mexico. Look. Yep. Red and green and white. You know that's the pico de gallo. I see que rico. Yeah. <laughs> Exacto. Okay. So, what were we talking before? I forgot. We were talking about the stuffing and how you like your onions. Yeah, also um, the collective maybe, no? Besides the, besides the cooking of the food, I meant. Oh. Oh, yeah, we're talking about Frida and how, like, there's, like, different versions of, like, where, you know, for Lupe, she has all these uh, memories of her, you know, learning to cook with her own mother. Um, and... Um, or stories that she heard and then even she was very aware that that she loved to have these like big elaborate parties for every celebration there was and in Mexico and also in Puerto Rico in every Spanish country really there's a lot of like um, celebrations of like basic a lot of them have to do with the Catholic religion you know and they're very much in practice right like baptisms and and, um, you know, like Dia de los Muertos mm -hmm. or like, you know, like different um, holidays of saints, you know, like it's like in Puerto Rico, for example, there's like a fiesta, fiestas patronales, which is patron saints, fest festivities that happen for in each town has a saint and each town does 10 days of partying. What? And he's celebrating this, their saint of their, their patron saint, right? And in Mexico, they had even more. Because in Mexico, they're even more hardcore about Catholicism. And more <laughs> hardcore about their saints and their virgins. They have a Virgencita de la Guadalupe. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we, have, we love we love us some Virgen de Guadalupe, man. Right? <laughs> that is no joke. Yeah, um, that was... Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's real. <laughs> so tell us about um, the music that we're listening to today. So this is Ch Chabela Vargas, and she uh, is actually originally from Costa Rica, but she, um, when she grew up, when she became, like, I think very, very young in her age, she decided to move to Mexico, and in Mexico, she found a home, and she basically became Mexican. So most people, if you ask them, they won't even know that she's from Costa Rica, they will think she's Mexican. <laughs> um, and it's, it's, I love it because I love her very much, but uh, a similar story is of uh, a composer from Puerto Rico called Rafael Hernandez. He's one of the most prominent and famous composers in Puerto Rico. He lived in Puerto Rico, then he moved to Mexico and made, made Mexico his home. And, and if you ask Mexicans, they may think that he's actually from Mexico, but he's from Puerto Rico. Um, so just like Chabela Vargas, Rafael Hernandez, uh, Rafael Hernandez was one of my first, I'm a musician, I should say, say that. <laughs> <laughs> and one of my first influences in my life has been Rafael Hernandez, because, you know, I was raised listening to his songs, you know, all that good stuff. Um, but then um, uh, Chabela Vargas became an influence of, like, I don't know if I can call her influence because I found her after I was already into all this music and all these songs, but she became a, a role model to mm. continue my um, my musical journey. I just love her. I Before I even knew her, some people would have said, said to me, oh my God, you reminded me of Chavela Vargas. And I would be like, oh my God, what? Like back then I didn't know that that was a huge deal. <laughs> <laughs> que honor. When they when they do now, I'm like, oh my lord, like that's just too much, and I'm not saying I'm anything. I'm not taking it. I'm saying I've heard it, and I'm grateful for that. <laughs> um, let's see. I think I need a bigger pen because these. How are we doing this time? We're good. We are. 
Okay. Yeah, we I'm good. gonna heat it up. I'm gonna heat up a little bit more just to speed up the process and see if we can make them smaller because I need the space for the meat. Sounds so good. it does have meat, but it's like it's not like meat with vegetables, it's kind of a good a, an equal ratio of it. Mm -hmm. So to speak, that's how I like it. I think most people will like go meat heavy and short little on the vegetables. But I like to give it a little bit more of the, you know, healthy. <laughs> there are options. This, re this recipe is very flexible for any sort of diet restrictions. Right. You can supplement the meat for papas or potatoes um, yes. or, you know, go more heavy on beans. You right. can use, like, the refried beans that we're talking about. Or well, nopales like you did the, the last time. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's your stuffing could be any stuffing you like. Um, this is kind of based on the classic one that I've always um, I've, I'm used to um, but again more heavy on the veggies than on the actual meat well thank you everybody for who's joining um, we have a slew of new people on the on the, the insta live uh, yeah. so thank you so much uh, we're cooking some chile rellenos right now uh, based off of the classic Mexican, um, I guess, recipe. Uh -huh. And we're just talking about, you know, yeah. <laughs> Will the recipe be posted? Uh, well, it <laughs> I actually have no idea. It's not by cups or anything. I, I kind of cook like, like Zena, and that's holding the, the uh, phone. I, um, it's by eye. I used a kind of a medium pepper, a, a red one and a green one, half of a large onion, and this is what it looks like. Right there, so Ooh. far. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I've just been um, refrying. How do you say Sofreir. Frying. Sauteing. Sauteing. Right. Sauteing. 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 All my veggies and waiting and waiting and hoping that it happens faster than it is. Because then we need to add the meat and the season. But what we can do for the meat is... Okay, so I got some grass-fed organic ground beef. Ooh. And then I'm going to... Uh, open it and put it in this container and use... Uh, again, this is where we're uh, Mexico and, and, and you can either go Mexican or you can go Puerto Rican. Again, this is a Puerto Rican kitchen, so I have Puerto Rican seasonings and spices. And that is adobo. Oh, yes. Um, Let's look at your spice that, rack here. Is, Let's check no, this out. Not, the, not oh, that yeah, one. Not that one because they're only there. Well, these I'll are the, maybe there's, these there's are the some fancy. Extra ones. There's some, some extra ones that I rarely ever use, but I'll show you here. Getting a tour of Hania's kitchen. Look at look at this beautiful setup too. I just love this piece, <laughs> the furniture piece. Yes. You know that everything. Was in it, rose and steel. When she moved the photographer. Yeah, so Renee Rosenstiel. Yes, All right, so shout out. When she moved to her new home, she got this. Uh, there it is, the other one. Hi here. Boom. So which one is this one? This it's is the, the all-purpose all seasoning with pepper. Con pimienta. Oh, okay. Okay. So, yeah, there's several different types of adobo, everybody. Right, and then I add to these... Peach, do I want to add this to this one? I'm thinking. Kenya's thinking face. I'm thinking. I'm going to add sazon. <laughs> sazon, but I don't want to add a lot because it's super, super, super potent. But this is what it's called. It's con cilantro y achote. It's another okay. different type of seasoning. Okay. Can you tell us what achote is? Achote is a red uh, seed. Anato is called? Anato? Anato? And uh, the Native American, the Native Indians, the Tainos in Puerto Rico used to wear, uh, use it for makeup. 
um, and like paintings and stuff like that. Um, and then we decided to use it to add some color to the to the food. To the food. Yes. What I like with this. Mm. How much, but it smells really good. So far, so good. Yes. What else? Anyway, so it's one ingredients: medium pepper, medium um, uh, medium green pepper, medium red pepper, half an onion. I would start with like, I don't know, four or five like little uh, cloves of garlic, and then majalos en esto. Mash them in this with cilantro and olive oil. For anybody who doesn't already have a mortar and pestle in their kitchen, go get one. Yes. And then <laughs> we got them in, and I seriously just put some aloe in it. So let's see. Just to give it some flav flavor, yeah. flavor to these. So more aloe. And that's it, just to give it a nice... And the aloe has salt and pepper and all those things, so you don't need to add any of that because it already comes in it. It's a mix of uh, salt, garlic, uh, pepper, and turmeric. Yeah, black pepper and turmeric. But somehow, it's special. <laughs> and Puerto Ricans tend to put aloe on everything, even on cereal. It's not true. <laughs> We make fun, we, we laugh about that because it really is kind of ridiculous how much we use it on every plate that we have. And I'm just going to go ahead and add it to our dish right here. Love. So the reason cántalo. why I'm playing Chabela Vargas is because Chabela and Frida were lovers at some point. Um, lovers? When, when, um... When Chabela, was, when Chabela was really young and she went to Mexico, she was invited to go to a party by a friend of his, I think a photographer, just like one of the artist peers of, of the time. And I can only imagine, you know, like, in, in, like artists everywhere, we all know each other, right? It's this, like, this group of like-minded like individuals that, hey, let's hang out together, we need to party, we need to create, we need to, you know, just make stuff happen. So, uh, her friend invited her to to uh, this party at, at, um, at, uh, this is too tiny, this is too tiny. ¿Qué más tienes que echar? Leche, carne, ya. Sí, pero no, está yo bien. Creo que, yo creo que ya está bien. Esta me la regaló Cristiana. Oh, gracias, Cristiana. Gracias, Cristiana, mi amor. It's a gift from Cristiana. Anyway, so, um, so she was invited to this party, and, you know, apparently they, you know, hit it off. Um, Frida was pretty much, like, struck with her, you know, with Chabela Vargas, like, vibe, mm. and she wrote eventually, the only thing, apparently there were more letters, but I don't know if Chabela or, or destroyed them or got rid of them, or, Chabela was a bit of, she was an alcoholic, so, um, she had a very rocky life as well, uh, who knows what happens to a lot of those memories from the years, you know, but, um, um, apparently, uh, uh, Frida wrote to a friend of theirs that um, Chabela was this uh, fantastic human being, like being, you know, that she was, she said, uh, lesbiana se mantejo eroticamente, like she, she felt like her erotically. Mm. Um, and she was wondering if it was, if she was a gift for her from from the heavens, you know. Oh my gosh! Yes. yes. Qué and romantica. Then, I know, I know. So that's the only thing that's that I've that I've heard specifically from Frida, because she wrote this this letter is from her to a friend of theirs, of like a mutual friend of Chabela and Frida. And eventually, um, Chabela went to live with them. Chabela moved 
uh, for a year to live with with Diego and Frida. Uh, I think in La Casa Azul, it might have been in the in the other um, in the art house that they had. Mm. And they both each had a house, and yeah. they had like a balcony uniting it, that one. Mm-hmm. But you know, Diego and Frida moved a lot. They lived in Detroit. They went to San Francisco. They lived in La Casa Azul, but before that, they lived in that other house. And before that, they lived with some uh, artist friends. You know, a bit of a collective of their own. Um, so yeah. Anyway, I I love the Bohemian part of it, like the artists hanging out together, playing music, eating, drinking tequila, <laughs> and uh, creating some awesome, memorable moments of Bohemia. Yeah. Yes, I love the Bohemia. Feel like that's that's where that's where I uh, connect a lot with um, with both Frida and Chabela in that sense, and I just I'm fascinated by their love story. Short as, <laughs> short as, short lived as it was, I'm sure it was very passionate, very passionate. So Anna, the uncensored chef, asks Anna, in San Angel, in San Angel, fue que vivieron. Maybe that's where they live. I'm not exactly sure. I don't know, know all the details. It's quite a vast story full, full of uh, mystery. It may have been, been Coyacan. It may have, may have been, you know, somewhere else. I'm not exactly sure. And because there's so many different um, versions of it, I'm pretty sure that the fact that she lived a year was true because I heard it from Tabela's mouth, not from someone talking about it. <laughs> and the letter of her talking about how she wanted, um, you know, I, it's a beautiful letter. You should read it. She says something like, like, I wanted, it. she seems, she said that Tabela seemed liberal enough that if she wanted her, um, she would be naked in front of her and and mm. um, just go go to town, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but in much prettier romantic words, because of course she wouldn't have said that. Oh. <laughs> um, those are some big Dalmatians. Asks, can we make some margaritas? Um, what? What? I Please think maybe a, one day. What do you mean? Can we make? Can some, we make some margaritas? We can make margaritas all the time. That's, <laughs> is it, that a question? That's, not even that's a, question. a statement. That's Let's a statement. make that's, margaritas. Right. We can make margaritas. Margaritas are um, every day, all day. Actually, I was thinking of getting some tequila now, but it's kind of early, and I don't have that kind of stamina anymore. I used to. <laughs> I used to. <laughs> Could give me a, you know, should have tequila at noon, but not anymore. <laughs> we gotta honor our bodies. Yes, yes. And this Ooh. is what we're honoring our bodies. Look how pretty it looks so far. Yeah. So, far, so good. It looks wonderful. Mm-hmm. And that sazon is really giving it that pink mm-hmm. hue. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I will just let it sit here for a second. And now. So this is pretty interesting because I got all these platanos, right? These are plantains. And I got the most yellow ones I could find. And I found this like Wednesday. So I was thinking, oh, I'm ahead. I have enough time. This is going to work out. Well, no, it didn't because it's been cold. If this would have happened last week, they would have already been yellow. But it didn't happen. So they are kind of in between. I think they need like at least three, four more days. But I found this internet life hack about how to, you can speed up the process of the plantain. I found a bunch of different ones. Some of them is like in paper bags. Some of them are uh, mix them in a bag with apples and plastic bag actually, you know, with apples and somehow the gases that, re- that release, they speed the process. But for all that you need two, three days, mm-hmm. right? But if you want them, today like i wanted them today because i waited I, those were in paper bags for three days nothing happened so what i did is i found this one about put them in, in the microwave and you put them in the microwave for 30 seconds at a time right and um you would take it out 
you know, touch, make sure that they're okay. No, not yet. Then put in 30 seconds more and so forth and so forth and so, so on and so forth. So as you can see, right now this one is black. So if you compare it, this is what they look like. Ideally, if you just wait time pass, it's going to look really, really yellow with black spots. Um, this is, this is, if you let it get to this point, it may be a little bit overripe if, in nature, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But this is microwave. So can you describe the texture? So like, so this is pretty hard to the touch and this, is, this gives in, right? Mm, let's, so, let's zoom in on your finger. Oh, where is the banana? Okay. So like, let's see. Yeah. This one doesn't give a lot of give. And then, whoo, this one's still a little warm. And you can, I don't know if y'all can really see that, but it is giving. Yeah. It, I mean, I've never done this before. I'm actually experimenting with you. I'm Woo! glad that I have some platano, some uh, chiles too, because if that doesn't work well, at least we still have the cheese. <laughs> so, I'm going to put them 30 more seconds, hoping that it'll be ready. I know it's weird. This is not my ideal way of cooking, but hey, you know, we have to work with what we got. Yes, working on so the, the fly. Other, I, and I, what I wanted to show you is this. Come here. This is something that's good. So I have already made two other bla um, Chile chiles po pola poblano. So this is a poblano pepper. So what I did is I turned on the. I put um, a. If you have, this does. This is kind of not good if you have a. I guess you could still do it in a, in a um, non-gas electric, electric. An electric one. But I like the, the way of the fire, right? So what I did is I um, lifted the la hornilla and I put a piece of um, foil. Oil? Aluminum, aluminum foil. Mm -hmm. Yes, mio. And then I put this right there. I put it, I put it on, in the hornilla, put this back on top put the peppers and turn on the heat and then I kept turning them and turning them and turning them until they got all like nice and burnt. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I had already peeled and, and seeded the other ones. I'm going to do that one more time here. Let me see. So here are the one thing I will know about the Chile Poblanos is that you, once you get them burnt, you should peel them right away. Right away, yes. It's um, really, yeah. That's the best technique. I'm gonna peel this one right now. It's cold, so it's really hard to peel after it's, I mean, it's not hard. It's easier because it doesn't burn. Right. <laughs> it doesn't burn your hands, but it's hard because it just doesn't come off as easily as the other ones, you see? So this is what I'm doing. You know, there's something in that, um, you know, if it doesn't hurt, then something's wrong. I don't know. I feel like my grandma would have said something like that. Yeah, yeah. What is there's there, no pain, no gain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So this is some chile, and this is what we're doing is just like peeling off the the burned skin. You see? Mm-hmm. Now the benefit to peeling the the quemado, the burns, um, is really texture. Right. And Any texture. Yeah. Because you can still do it without peeling it. Like if I'm, I can, you can still eat it without peeling it. You'll have those, um, like you'll feel it <clears throat> while you're eating it. That they'll, like that, um, I don't know what the texture would be, but like it doesn't, it just doesn't chew as well. Right? Yeah. Like when you're chewing, you'll be like, there's some sort of, uh, well, that skin, right? Yeah. The skin, that's what it is. The skin looks like this. It's transparent. You see? Wow. But, yeah. You know, it come. It should come off. Ay, Dios mío, I love Chavela Vargas. Her pain. It's, I feel like... It's the... There's so much pain in her songs. Um, just as much pain as there is in Frida Kahlo's art pieces. You know, I feel like it's the perfect mix, like, you know, praying wine with an excellent cheese. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, the pairing of the music and the art is just, it's just fantastic. 
It's mm. uh, the, uh, you know, different but similar pain. Uh, I don't even know. Como se dice ese dolor, corta venas. Um, it just, yeah, it's, and it's the perfect, the perfect combination. Okay, so this is my daughter's plate. Aww. She's big now. This is Una... from twenty from twenty twelve. Inaru made a plate. <laughs> Shout out to Inaru. <laughs> Look. Oh my gosh. She would be so embarrassed. She's sixteen now, so that was twenty twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Cascara on mm -hmm. the skin, you see, and I pretty much got a lot of it out of it. Oh, you see, yeah. So all this stuff comes out, and I mean, you can use a knife or you can use your hands and split it. I mean, if you want it to be like perfect, you can use a knife, but hands are just as good. You see, mm -hmm. and you just split it open, kind of. So that some space to stuff it in, okay? And take off the seeds. Hania, yeah. do you relate to the expressive nature of like when you're in a lot of pain, do you find yourself singing more? I, that's a good question. I I feel like when I sing is when I release mm. the pain. Mm. So I feel the pain stays there a lot and it's not until I have the, that's why I love singing so much and that's why I need to perform live and and with other musicians and because every time I do it I feel like I'm exercising some some serious pain and serious you know hardships uh, and it really comes all of it comes out through song mm -hmm. yes you got a lot of hearts on that one yeah mm. <laughs> yes yes so you see this is a chile relleno clean and seated you see and I did it all with my hands you could also use a knife and all that stuff the problem with using your hands that it, it depends on the level of heatness, if that's a word, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like some of, some of these can be really spicy. So once you clean them, you're going to, the, the heat of the pepper is going to remain in your hands. So don't touch your eyes. Please don't touch your eyes. You know, just wash your hands really, 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 really well. Multiple times. Multiple times. One <laughs> after another, after another one. <laughs> If you think that you're done, watch it again. And it, uh, if in doubt, put some gloves on. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> that is something that when I make my, the salsas, um, I'm always using peppers that either were given to me or they're, you know, really random seeds. So I, mi esposo, he's always scolding me about uh, putting gloves on before I work with the peppers <laughs> because the spiciness actually it's not in the seed itself it is in the skin around the seed does that make sense like that little seed pocket oh yeah 15 minutes so oh All my right. god oh my god this is so exciting okay Hooy. so i think this is it i think so this is what we do right we got three peppers and a banana, which I don't, I mean, Let's plantain, check. which may or may not be, um, ready, ready, Ooh. but we're going to find out. And this is how we do it. Grab a knife. Boom. All right. So it may or may not work. <laughs> I don't know. But the idea is, um, the idea is the same thing we're doing. Wait until there's a really, really yellow with dark spot very you know and that they give in when you touch them you know don't wait till they're too dark because it just might 
not work. <laughs> but um, you cut both ends of the plantain, you make a slit like this, and you peel them. May or may not work again. So for those who are who just joined us, we are making chile rellenos with the poblano peppers, and we're making uh, cómo se dice uh, canoas, canoas, canoes uh, with the plátano. And the thing about the plátanos is that you know you get them at the store and they're really green. And so Henya tried a microwave trick to see if she could expedite the aging process who ever wants to expedite the aging process unless we work with food <laughs> <laughs> exactly um so this is what i'm doing is i'm putting the three rele chiles rellenos on a dish right here um i could have put some oil on the bottom but i don't know if it needs it because the the meat has a lot of grass in like the grass Grasa. <laughs> <laughs> the meat has a lot of grease. Grease, yeah. Uh, so there's there's an option to oil the pan before you put the poblano skins on there. I just want to take this opportunity to say hello, hello to everybody who's joining us. Um, a lot of people are learning some good tricks. Another and one. Sorry. Another thing you can do is you can either do uh, add refried beans to this. I was going to, but I don't think I want to. Uh, <laughs> um, especially because I'm not crazy about the brand I got, and I'm not trusting that it will be. Um, I like La Preferida, that mm. brand. If you ever are in a Mexican um, grocery store, like Las Palmas or know, Reinas. Palmas. Yeah, Rain. Like <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, there, there, there's many Mexicans working there can that can attest for the, you know, and from different places, not just Mexico. They're like Nicaragua and like Salvadorian and Honduras and all that good stuff. Anyway, so I'm not I'm skipping the 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 beans, but you could add refried beans as a base, like on the bottom of the chile rellenos. Otherwise, you can just add the stuffing right there. You see how pretty? Yeah. Qué bonito. Mm. And all of those beautiful smells that we I described earlier with the garlic. So the beginning was this oil base with the garlic and the cilantro. Um and the olive oil, those smells have kind of merged with the peppers that Henya put in here and the onions. And the onions really created a sweetness to it. Mm -hmm. So now we have the house filled with like the smokiness of the poblanos. And oh. uh, it's just a be it's be wonderful, beautiful smells. Yay! So, okay, now what we want to do is we got some, I got like some Mexican Chihuahua, uh, Mexican style cheese. It's already shredded, easier, faster. <laughs> Otherwise, I would get like queso blanco and then I shred it myself. And I have some Oaxacan cheese there as well, but we're cooking, we're short on time. So, <laughs> Well, and so the chihuahua cheese that Henya is using here is also, this is a really common melting cheese. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's different from the sort of crumble cheese that you would normally get with the um, queso fresco. Queso yes. fresco doesn't melt like, mm -hmm. like a quesadilla. Like, you know, it doesn't have that gooey mozzarella melted right. feel. Yes. But the chihuahua cheese does. Mm -hmm. So if you're ever, you know, making... Uh, you want to make something gooey, like this is the cheese to do it with. Mm -hmm. So the, okay, so it looks pretty enough. Should have been like, we're hitting this for 350, but let's assume that it was. And at 350 degrees, 
<laughs> you put these for 10 minutes in the oven. Let's time that, and that's gonna be pretty much the time that we have. <laughs> um, I'll do nine minutes, I don't care. <laughs> and, but yeah, 10 minutes, that should be enough. In the meantime, you grab the platano that you already had, and I can get rid of these. You grab a, a pan. Esta chavela me tiene el corazón partido. Okay, so this is what I want to do. I'm going to cut it now. Just because if it was if it was already ready, it's not. And it's probably not going to be really good. But I'm going to do it anyway because... Oh, Imagine that this was already ripened, then you wanna you wanna um, fry it and kind of like um, until it's yeah, like kind of caramelize it. Yeah, the, yes, but it's it'll be as just make sure that it's like dorado, like like golden in each in all the sides. Oh no, all the sides. Yes. Anyway, so you so want it golden brown? Golden brown. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and then after that, we'll see if we have time. We're, we're going to go with, uh, we have to work with physics and time and all that, but yes. <laughs> um, what did I want to say? Yeah, I want to make sure that we talk about all the things that, is there any other questions or anybody, any, anybody has any kind of, um, we have just a lot of learning and, um, Oh, corazón partido. Ha, ha, ha. Love, you are so natural. So much love. So much love. Lots of hearts. Do you want to... ¿Quieres cantar? A ver si... Esta es la Dios mío. Ay. Qué dolor. Qué dolor, Chabela. Déjame ver si encuentro la, esta acá que me gusta. Uh, Paloma Negra es bella. Todas son bellas. The ¿Esta sabe? La, la Llorona es la canción. The Crying Woman is one of the songs that I've been singing forever <laughs> with uh, Genia y Peña, my uh, duet. Uh, we do a lot of songs in the style of boleros and like super old. <laughs> um, Mexican rancheras that are just heart gut wrenching, you know, heart wrenching. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's something. <laughs> yeah, your heart throb. It's like. Cariños. There it is. I... Todos Mujer. Quédate allí. Voy ahora. Ya ven, ya ven. Estoy como el, okay, so I love how you're giving appropriate social distancing to the um, frying pan. <laughs> So it's brown. It doesn't look like as pretty as it would if you just let nature do its thing. Um, but um, we'll find out. We'll taste you, taste and let you know. I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend you to be patient and let it get brown. I mean, get it get brown. Like let it get very yellow and with the black spots. The black spots are good, but they have to be really yellow. Yeah. Paciencia. Paciencia, paciencia y fe. Sin zapatitos, yeah. Hello, I'm home. Estoy en la casa. Ah, qué rico. Mira qué bonito se ve. Mmm. Ve? Y ahora, so, if this doesn't work out like this, because I'm going to just like cut it and taste it, 
then this can become tostones so what you do is you fry the whole thing then you cut it and then you smash it and then you um, fry it fry it separately mm -hmm. always you can always look up the recipe online it's called tostones tostones it's supposed to be it can a que cuando las mueve el viento lo llorona parece que están llorando que cuando las mueve el viento lo llorona parece que están llorando mm. Okay, ya casi va. Yeah. I love I love how you know like art and music and food mm. and drink are the best together. <laughs> They're inseparable. They're you know? inseparable. I think like one without the other, there's always something missing, you know? But if you got this yeah, it, it didn't work for that. It's okay. I can make those on a set of these. They're going to be kind of sweet, but... Yeah. Okay. Mm. So, I just wanted to let you all that, that know that um, Nicolas Marie's exhibit is going to last until May 9th. And after that, Not Way Collective is going to be um, exhibiting uh, some of our intimate portraits. Um, each of the 13 members are going to have um, some of our intimate portraits as part of the um, exhibit replacing that Nicolas Murray room. Uh, so you'll still have those intimate portraits of Frida Kahlo and then our own. And we're really, really grateful on the excited about that um, thank you again to the um, museum for making this really really cool uh, amazing forward thinking opportunity happen it's, it's, it's about time and it's great that it's happening and it's great that you guys are doing it let's see I'm almost done right all right you want to yeah let's 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 see what happens. I think it's gonna be fine. We just really need to melt the cheese. Yeah, just melt the cheese. And I wanna let me take this this stuff out of here before it. Let's see how close can Zayna get before <laughs> burning the phone. Thank you so much. Yay. Okay. I'm talking Bohemia, talking what is it? Bohemian. Um Food, art, music, deliciousness. And if you want to have a tequila with this, I recommend Patron. I really like Patron. I like the Esposado. I like Julio. There's very, very, very many different ones. So look, this is what it looks like. Ooh. So it'll be basically the same thing, but with platanos. Um, and instead of baked, it would be fried. Okay. Ay, que bellísimos. Mm. But even even after they're fried, you want to do the same thing. You want to grab them from the when they're fried, put them in an oven, then stuff them, and then put melted cheese. Put them back in the oven for like a few minutes. Back, and it's ready. Uy. Oh, look, your timer went <laughs> off. Okay. Well, super. Like, muchísimas gracias a Muchas todos. Gracias. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you for all your comments, everybody. And hasta pronto, you know, like get vaccinated. This is a PSA. Get your stuff done and be safe. Keep social distancing. Wear your mask. Go check out the Frida Kahlo uh, exhibit. exhibit. Yes. The, do so. Bye bye. Besos. Gracias. Ciao. Como se para. Ay. Con likes. Ay.